Cool. Um, just a second to get everything open here. Okay. Hey, it's nice to meet you. <laughs> so we're doing our one-on-one -on -one session on Wednesday, right? This Wednesday? Can you repeat? We're doing our first session on Wednesday, right? At 2.20? Yes, yes. Okay, okay cool. Well, That's it's right. nice to meet you. <laughs> um, nice to meet I'm, you, too. I'm echoing. Echo. Um. Uh, so, hi, everyone. This is um, an English class on reported speech and travel. So, we're talking about... Rome today. Um, so come on in and hang out with me. Um, to warm up, I'll warm up would you like to go to Rome? Um, would you like to go to Italy? Is that somewhere that you want to travel or that you're planning on traveling? Um, Alex, do you have headphones? Um. Just a second. Okay, no problem. I'm just going to mute him. Um, Frickin, do you want to go to Italy? Is that somewhere that you want to travel? Yeah, totally. I'm totally interested and in, I want to see what kind of architectural design are they. Like, can I see? I mean, it's the um, capital city of Roman Empire and it's huge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know if it works or not enough because. Uh, you know, the only place that I know in Rome is Colosseum. I can't even pronounce it. Colosseum. So, Colosseum. And mm -hmm. probably there are more than just there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll yeah. look at some of the other stuff today. Cool. Um, I think Alex is going to look for some headphones. Yeah, I want to go to Italy too. I'm very excited to do that eventually. Um, all right, cool. Thanks, Alex. That should fix the problem, the echo, once you get it hooked up. So, cool. Um, when will I go? I'm going to Italy next year sometime. While I'm living in Spain, I'm going to Italy and Portugal. Very excited. Um, but I don't know when exactly. I'll figure it out. Maybe on Christmas holidays. Ooh. <laughs> Um, Alex, what about you? Would you like to travel to Italy? Yes, I'd like to travel to Italy. Mm -hmm. What would you like to see? Um, Colise Coliseum. Mm -hmm. um, Rome itself. Yeah, just in general, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, Okay, so today for our pronunciation point, um, we're looking at a skeptical intonation. So this is a sort of tone that we use when we are skeptical about information that someone gives us. So maybe you think that they're lying or you're confused, you want to clarify something, or you're gossiping. That's when we use this sort of intonation. Um, hi, Che Che. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How about you? Good. Nice to see you. Haven't seen you for yeah, a while. Yeah, nice to see you too. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just going to paste this. Um, so questioning, clarifying, expressing confusion, gossiping, that sort of thing. Um, so for example, um, if you tell someone a lie, they might respond with skeptical intonation. Like a student from Taiwan might say, I'm from Korea. And then I would go, you said you were from Taiwan. So, uh, since when? What? Since when are you from Korea? Yeah, since when are you from Korea? You said you were from Taiwan. Or yeah, you can just say, since when? <laughs> since when, right? Um, or you said... 
Um, but you told me. Or you could go, wait, right? You might go, wait, you said, right? Um, and you're using a certain intonation. Your voice kind of drops. Your eyebrow goes up, maybe, <laughs> if you're like me. Um, and you look skeptical. Like, you, you don't really buy it. You don't really believe what they're selling you. Um, so, for example, um, Firkin, I am from Texas. Wow. Really? Yeah, so you're like, really? I don't know. I don't believe you. Um, so I want you guys to practice lying to each other <laughs> and using this sort of intonation to... Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't have much of a Texan accent. Oops. Um, so I want you to practice lying to each other and then using this intonation to show that you're skeptical about what the other person is saying. Okay? So, for example, like what I just did. Firk, and I'm from Texas. He goes, really? No, you're not. You told me you're Canadian. And you don't have a Texan accent. And I'd go, oh, you're right. <laughs> I was lying. Okay? So, um, Liliana. Hi, Liliana. Did you catch my explanation about skeptical intonation? Uh, uh, yes. Uh, yes. Cool. Okay, so um, Furkan, lie to Liliana for us. <laughs> okay, yesterday I killed two chickens. I was sorry. <laughs> yesterday, yes sorry. yesterday I I ran away. You know that uh, uh -huh. ran over two chickens. Really? <laughs> that was a sad moment. Did you eat them? <laughs> yeah, you can't eat rod kills. Well, they are chickens. <laughs> Good, Liliana. So you go, really? Right? Hmm. Interesting. Right? So you don't really believe it. Um, Liliana, try lying to Alex. Okay. Um, Alex, um, I, I won the lottery. Today. I, okay. I won uh, 100 uh, billion dollars. <laughs> it can't be. <laughs> it's a lot of money. Yeah, it can't be true. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a, a millionaire. A millionaire now. Glad, to, glad, glad to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be friends, you and me. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Um, Alexander, lied to Che Che. Um, I'm from South Africa. What? No, I can't believe it. <laughs> okay. Good. Uh, it's, not, it's not. It's not true. <laughs> it's, okay. <laughs> That's perfect to go. What? No. Um, okay. Che Che lied to Isam. It's, um, uh, I have two husband. Oh, it's big line. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't say, line. you can't say, oh, you liar. <laughs> you have, to, liar. <laughs> you have to show her with your words that you don't believe her. Yes. <laughs> I can't believe you, Cheche. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because it is not true. Okay. Cheche, how many husbands do you have? <laughs> <laughs> I'm still girls. Ah, okay. So zero. <laughs> For now. Um, tons. Wow, for good. Um, not all of us live in, um, you know, polyamorous relationships. <laughs> have you guys ever seen those um, TV shows about the polygamous families? No. No. Is there any? Wow. Which family? You know what polygamy is? What's polygamy? Mm. Like, uh, many wives. Mm -hmm. Many wives. For example, this show. Um, sister wives. 
It's an American show. Oh. Um, I don't watch it, but I think there's one, two, one, two three, four. Four wives. <laughs> um, oh, no. huh? A TV series. Um, there's actually a few of them because it's kind of like a radical thing in North America. It's like people are, I don't know, not very accepting of it. So it's interesting. Maybe we'll do a class on polygamy. Maybe. But there are some uh, Arabian countries, I think, that uh, they have uh, mm. many wives. Mm -hmm. So it depends on the culture. Um, in American culture, it's really unheard of. Um, but not completely. There is um, there's a certain area, a certain demographic of people that, that do this. Um, it's just never really spoken about that much in North America. So now they've come out and created this um, sensational television series about it. Um, you know someone who has 24 kids and three wives. Wow. Interesting. Oh. It just depends on the culture. I mean, what <laughs> yes. cool. I don't care. Um, <laughs> it's interesting. But maybe we'll do a class on pulling. Uh -huh. yeah. um, okay, so any questions about that skeptical intonation? So there's no real um, like science to how it works. It's just kind of expressing your skepticism when you're talking to someone. They're lying. You're, you mm -hmm. change your voice a little bit, your face, and you, you tend to drag your words. Like, mm, really? Like, you drag your words a little bit, um, and you might give them a certain facial expression to, to go with it, right? Mm -hmm. Like my, mm, yeah, okay. <laughs> like, whatever. Um, yeah, so... It's just a way that you show you're confused or something like that. Um, okay, for grammar, we're looking at uh, reported speech. So here's the document for reported speech. It's a bit of a long one today, <laughs> but we'll get through it. Yes, we will. Um, okay, reported speech. Maybe a uh, Che Che. You yep. can start us off. We'll take turns reading and I'll kind of chime in as we go. Okay. First, there are times in English when somebody will repeat that somebody else has said. The first option is to state the, the person's exact word in questions, question marks. Good, quotation. This is direct speech. Qu quotation. Quotation mark. Mm hmm. This is direct speech. And then the president responded, we will declare war if they attack us. The police focus spokesperson stated to the newspapers, we have three witnesses to the robbery which occurred last night. It occurred. Occurred. Yeah, think of it like this. Like bird? It's the same sound as bird. Occurred. Occurred. Um, good. So this is direct speech. Direct speech is, has quotation marks. Okay? Um, reported speech is when we're, it's exactly what it sounds like. We're reporting what they've said. No quotation marks. The accountant said that the report would be finished by Friday. She said she would not arrive on time. So we're nixing the quotation marks and adding the word that a lot of the time. And it has two names, reported speech, indirect speech. Okay. Um, second, um, Isam, would you like to read? Yes. Okay, we're right here. <coughs> second is... Uh, it is uh, simple to form reported speech. Look at the following to explain which compared what somebody said compared to reporting what they said. Jack explained my brother is going to prison. <coughs> he said he, uh, his present is going to prison and he said my f friends 
left for vection. He said he uh, finds ha had left for vection. Not, mm -hmm. use, not using that in option, uh, optional, mm -hmm. it is more often used in formula speech. Good. Fiance. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was trying to make the accent, but it was. <laughs> what is the difference between fiance and, and girlfriend? Is the same? Uh, your fiance is um, once you've proposed to them and they have a, an engagement ring, mm. then they're your fiance. So uh -huh. fiance is for when you're engaged. Uh -huh. And um, we use the same word for guys and girls. Uh -huh. So if if me and my future boyfriend, whatever I get one, are engaged, I would be his fiancé and he would be my fiancé. Same word. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah. The same um, word. But it's, it's French, I just can't get the accent uh -huh. on the E. There should be an accent here. Uh -huh. um, but it, yeah, it's still pronounced the same way in English. We say fiancé. Um, in French okay. also fiancé, in French it's also fiancé. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um, except we're missing our accent. <laughs> Let's see if I can get it. Here it is. I'm just going to steal the E. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Um, so, right. So it's simple to form it. You just go from the quotations, remove them, and kind of remove the directness from the speech. And pretend that you're you're telling someone what somebody else said, right? He said, "My fiance left for vacation." He said, "Hey, my right fiance left turns into had left." Mm -hmm. So sometimes we have to conjugate, sometimes not. But we'll get into that in a minute, okay? Um, for now, you remove the quotation marks, and you could use that it's optional. He said that, or just he said. Okay. Um, third, uh, Liliana? And third, sometimes when using reported speech, we will change the tense in the reported clause, the part which starts with that. It's mm -hmm. most, most common, the shift goes back one tense. As an example, the present simple will go back to past simple refers to this change as a uh, back shift. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel jealous of original words becomes in reported speech. He conf confided or confided? Yep, confided. Confided in me that uh, he felt jealous, reported speech. The florist hasn't seen Titanic becomes in reported speech. He said he had not seen Titanic, reported speech. Note, note, the use of back sheet in reported speech is only when it makes sense to do so. Good. Um, just a quick note. Uh, jealous. Jealous. Uh, jealous. Yes. Like, like this. Jealous. It's uh, not jealous. Uh, it's not O here. It's an A uh sound. Uh, jealous. 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 Mm -hmm, good. And uh, you, it's confided because of this E. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Confide. The E oh, is God. making it a long I. Uh, okay. Confided. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, right. So sometimes we shift back one tense. Okay. So we are going from present perfect. So I mean, sorry, present simple to past simple. Going one tense, right? Um, hasn't turns into hadn't. Past perfect. Present, past, perfect. present perfect goes to past perfect, right? Um, now we don't always do this, and to determine whether or not you need to change your tense, um, it depends on when you're reporting what's being said. Okay, so it depends on your timing, basically. If Frank said, I'm tired five minutes ago, he's still tired, right? Mm -hmm. So he said that he's tired. We don't need to backshift because he's still tired. It's only five minutes ago. Uh -huh. Okay. Versus Frank says, I'm tired. He said it last night. Becomes Frank said that he was tired. 
we do have to back shift because it's been, you know, 24 hours. He's probably slept by now. So whether or not you're changing your tense, it depends on when you're reporting. Okay? Um, you, uh, you tend to change the, the tense when something happens the previous day? Right. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or more. Okay. Right. So there's not a there's not an exact um, there's not an exact timeline, right? So mm -hmm. this is something that you if if you're using the present simple, you have to decide is this still happening? Mm -hmm. Is it is it still true? If not, then you're going to switch to the past. Um, I mean, it's safe to say after a day, it's probably different. Um, but it totally it does depend on the context. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Um, there's no real, you know. Yeah. Um, okay. And then we also um, who hasn't read one yet? Furkin's gone. Uh, Alex. Yes. Could you read a uh, fourth for us? Uh, with glad. Mm -hmm. When we use reported speech, uh, we may need to make changes to time. Now, yesterday, and place there. Uh, this uh, cafeteria. Um, in terms of time, of so, uh, of something is reported around the same time. Changes to time words uh, probably uh, do not need to be made. However, uh, if something is reported at a different time, then change the words. Okay. It was it was freezing yesterday. Uh, becomes he said uh, that it was freezing the day before. Mm -hmm. uh, we are going to go fishing tomorrow. Uh, becomes uh, they said that uh, they were going to go fishing the next uh, day. Okay, I want to help you with your TH sound, Alex. When you're making your TH, you're saying z, 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 saying it like a Z. So make sure that when you make your TH, your tongue should be here in between your teeth. The, that. The, the, this, that, that. This, that. <coughs> Good. So make sure when you're reading that you don't uh, lose it and you uh, use a Z sound. Make sure your tongue gets out. Okay. Um, okay, good. Um, so same thing basically as what I just said. Um, you don't, if you're not changing the tense, you might have to change the time expression if there is one, right? Um, if it's not yesterday anymore, then you need to change it to the day before. Or maybe to be a few days ago. Less. Depends on when it's being reported, right? We're going fishing tomorrow. Tomorrow in reported speech, it becomes, they said that they were going fishing the next day. Unless you're saying this five minutes later. Then you would say, they said that they're going fishing tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Right? So same sort of, same sort of thing with time expressions. Uh, you, you basically have to use your judgment and know when it was said. Right? Okay. Um, so a few days ago, last week, what are some other time expressions? Um, oh, we say the other day a lot. Mm -hmm. Day basically just means anywhere, you know, three to six ish. Anywhere in there, it's just a very oops, a very generic way to report time. The other day. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Um, I'm going to skip that one. Oh, right. This and that. So this in reported speech, that. And here, yeah. unless you're still standing in the same place. Mm -hmm. Right? It's uncomfortably hot in this room. Becomes it's un it was uncomfortably hot in that room. Unless you're still in the room, then you would say this. I left my pager here. Becomes there. Unless you're pointing at the table where you left it, right? Mm -hmm. um, so usually we're gonna gonna change it unless you happen to still be in the same spot. Um, let's go down to fifth. 
So, Chiche, you're up again. The yeah, fifth reported questions are another form of reported speech. As with reported statements, you may need to change the pronouns, tenses, text shift, time, the time words, or place words. However, you may also need to change the word order as after you report a question. It is no longer a question. Do you like bananas? Because he wants to know if I like bananas. Where do you work? Becomes he wants to know where if I work. Get worked. Worked. Good. Um, Words. Right. So if you're reporting a question, it's obviously not a question anymore. It's done. Right. So mm -hmm. you report it as a statement. Sometimes that includes if. Mm -hmm. It depends on the question, right? Do oh, you like bananas? Yes. Uh, why they don't change? I uh, don't know. No. Because in the second, they change the verb work to work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, why in the first, uh, they don't change the, the tense to pass? Yep. So again, this is um, determined by the timing. Mm -hmm. So we're being given examples out of context here, right? Mm -hmm. um, but this this answer could or this could just as easily be he wanted to know where I work, mm -hmm. right? It it depends on when you're reporting. Mm -hmm. He wanted to know if I liked bananas mm -hmm. when I was. Mm -hmm. So it it depends. It's all about the time. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. And then we have requests and orders. Um, Isam, would you like to read number six for us? Yes. <coughs> six. Uh, two other types of reported speech are re re reposted mm -hmm. and orders. Requests are when you ask someone, usually poli politely, to do something reported are usually anthropocet mm -hmm. introduced introduced mm -hmm. with the verb ask forming this type of reported speech in quite simple ask Good. plus noun plus two plus information mm -hmm. is um quite simple quite simple yeah infinitive Infinitive. Mm -hmm. They asked him. Uh, they asked him to stop smoking uh, this cigar. 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 Mm -hmm. Good. I was asked if I wanted to buy the con condo. Yeah. Does everyone know what a condo is? Condominium. condominium. Yeah, condominium. Short form for condominium. Oh. It's like a, an apartment building, a big apartment building. Mm -hmm. um, right. Shall I continue? Mm -hmm. oh. um, yeah, yeah, you might as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or, uh, order are when, order are when you tell someone to do something. They are not on on standard, polite mm -hmm. speech, and are more of a. Uh, Comment, framing, comment, command, command, yeah, command. Mm -hmm. for, for firming order is also quite simple. Tell plus noun. It goes down here. Uh, plus two plus in which he Do you told him. In vitive. In vitive. Good. Infinitive. 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 Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He told he told him to stop in in <laughs> im yeah. im date im, im Yep. Sounded out like this. Im. Im. Imed imedi Good. Immediately. 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 Good. His mother kept uh, telling him. To eat with his mouth shut. <laughs> that sounds familiar. <laughs> eat with your mouth closed. <laughs> when we were kids, all the time. <laughs> um, okay, right. So 
just to back up a little bit, so requests and orders. They asked him to. I was asked if. So if you want to report a request or something that someone told you to do, a lot of the time you're going to be using to here. Mm -hmm. And they asked or they or told. <laughs> Um, they wanted uh, etc right so request and order um, this is kind of the format that you follow your verb and then you're going to be using to with the infinitive um, he told him to stop kept telling him to eat okay um, Certain verbs require that a direct object is placed after the initial verb, but before the reported clause. Um, so there are certain verbs that require a direct object. You need to tell someone, right? You don't just tell. There's always an object when you're using the verb tell. So you need to include it. Same with ask. You don't just ask. In general, you ask someone something, right? So with verbs that require this object, make sure that you're including them, okay? Um, unless, you know, there's the kind of philosophical ask, right? It's like, he asked questions about life and whatever. Um, but generally speaking, there's an object, um, so you have to make sure you include it. So this is a bit of a complicated topic. There's a lot of dimensions going on. Um, but do you guys have any questions? I've given you the document, so you can review it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, only when uh, you change the expression of time, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, for example, yesterday, the day before yesterday, mm -hmm. uh, next day, it's only the things that I, I don't know. It's a little tricky. Yes. Right. So, like, what would you change the time expression to? Mm -hmm. Is what you're, okay. So, for example, um, where is it? It's here. So I'm just going to choose another color, maybe this. Um, so we have, oops, um, today. Uh, what else? Mm. Okay. What does today turn Tomorrow. into? The day before. Yep. Today? You forgot tomorrow. Oops, sorry. Uh, uh no. Uh, well, yes, but no, because with reported speech, we're not like time traveling, okay? <laughs> so you can't really have said something tomorrow, I don't think. So that's not gonna work. <laughs> um, today turns into yesterday, the day before. What would yesterday turn into? The day before. Mm. Or Combo what was yesterday. the what was the generic one that I said? Do you remember? No. No. The other day. Uh, oh. Unspecific, right? Just some day, right? Or depending on how long ago, you could say a few days ago, um, right? A number. Last yeah. week, what would last week turn into? Uh, the other week. The week before. No. Blank weeks ago? Or mm -hmm. a week ago? Blank weeks ago? Right? Um, okay. What about last year? The year uh, last year. This isn't the same. The year before? Yeah. The other year. The other year. No. No. It doesn't work. It sounds really strange. Um, 
but you could say a, f a few years ago. Blank years ago, right? Uh -huh. um, another indiscriminate, um, unspecific one, right? Yeah, a while ago. A while ago goes with yesterday as well and last week. Um, because it's just very unspecific. A while ago. We have no idea when, just some time in the past. Very unspecific. Um, this turns into that, that. that turns into there. there. Okay. But isn't that the changing what you're what the other person is saying when you say a while ago? Because that person didn't mean to say unspecific. Mm, yeah, it, it depends on the context. As long as you recognize that these are really unspecific things to, to say um, and you're not trying to be specific, then it doesn't really matter. Like you could say, oh, my friend told me that a while ago. He's go oh, how long ago? I don't know, a couple of years ago. Oh, that's another way you can say it. A couple of years ago or just a couple years ago. Okay. Um, same with weeks. And days. Oh. Of days ago. Um, does this help? Does that answer kind of, Liliana? Uh, yes. Yeah, yes. so yeah. I, it, it's really going to depend on when you're reporting, you know? Because yeah, it just depends. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's clear. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Um, I'm just going to put um, I have yes. another question. Yesterday or sometime long. sometime earlier in the week. Could be a few days ago. Uh, yeah, for again? For example, if someone says, hey, come over here, and you say, he said, hey, come over there, or again, the same thing? Um, it, de it depends. So when we were talking about this and that here and there, um, wait, sorry. Yeah, I got it. Sorry, that's a really bad explanation. Uh, got change this to that, or if you're still in the location where the thing was said, mm -hmm. um, uh -huh. or the... It's, it's hard to put that into writing, but I explained it before, right? So if you're still where it was said, then you're still going to say this. Uh-huh. So it's dependent, again, on where you are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is it clear? Thank you. Yeah, yes. thank you. Okay, cool. Um, hmm. A while ago. A while. Hmm. I'm going to have to look into that one. I'm not sh How strange. Do you see what it's doing? <laughs> This this one's incorrect, but this one's correct. <laughs> I'll look into a while. I think you can put it either way. It doesn't really matter. Um, okay. Well, you have this document. You can always Facebook me if you've got questions. Um, also, actually, I have... Let me find it. I have um, some homework that you guys can do if you need yeah, yeah. practice. Let me find it. Just give me a second. I've got a PDF file. Um, where is it? It's in here somewhere. Oh. Ah, found it. Okay, here you go. Um, let me just share it with you guys. Um, okay, so a, another uh, long document here. It's like 12 pages long. Um, it's even got 
a table of contents. <laughs> but mm -hmm. there's a grammar review on the first page where they kind of go over at the first couple pages actually where they really go over how it works um, and specifically how to change the tenses. Uh, okay. So like this this is um, probably going to be a useful page for you guys. Uh -huh. So how does the direct speech tense change in reported speech? Like when we're talking about this back shift, what do we mean exactly? What tense goes to what tense? So there's a good explanation there. And then tons of exercises. Okay, mm -hmm. and all the answers are at the end. Okay. Okay. Thanks, um, Emma. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Can Can you guys access that? I didn't even check. Yes, you can. Okay. Cool. Um. There you go. After the class, I can enter it in this uh, website. Yeah. The report is built. Mm hmm. Uh, click the link there. I put a link. Yes. Uh, after the class, I know. Oh I right. Sign. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, you can download it. It's a PDF file. Um, and if you download it, then you should be able to mm, write. Yes, it. yes, yes. I can download it. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can print Great. it even if you want to. Um, I made it, yes. Okay, I just have to refresh, guys. My hangout froze, so oh. I'll be back in one second, and okay. then we'll look at our article. I try to take at least four per day, two in the uh, morning and two at night. And how many classes have you been taking? Me? Mm -hmm. uh, I guess three. Three? Mm. Three, four. Because I don't pay attention even, even though I'm there sometimes. <laughs> three or four? You've been taking more than that, haven't you? Between mine and Lauren? Actually, yeah. Ah, yes. I don't take any other classes. Because, you know, sometimes I just don't pay attention. <laughs> yep, I Perkins can't. found another fave teacher. He really likes Lauren. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I Lauren. remember that. I saw him in Lauren's class about yoga. Mm hmm Cool. Okay. Rome. Woo! Um, we're going to have to do a, a skim here because we've really cut into our article in talking time. So I'm just going to skim through this. Um... Roma. Oops, here we go. Mm. Sites and attractions. So um, I'm not going to do a lot of reading, rather just kind of, you know, skim through the list. So some of the biggest sites in Rome, I don't know how much you guys know about Rome, but lots of basilicas and churches are very popular. Um, St. Peter's Square is a big one. Um, access to St. Peter's Basilica, the center of Christianity. Um, oh, by the way, all of the Italian students who are watching, I so apologize for my <laughs> <Have you been? laughs> ignorance and pronunciation. <laughs> um, okay, we've got the Colosseum, the Roman Forum, the Pantheon, Roman Aqueducts, um, Baths of Caracalla. Caracalla? Way, do you know how far is Pisa Tower from Rome? Mm, the Tower of Pisa? No, I don't know. Pisa. You can, um, let's find out. Is that how you spell it? Isn't it like this? No, no, pizza. With an S? Pizza uh, with an S. S, S, S. I didn't know if it was the Z or an S. S. Okay, here it is. Directions. Good old Google Maps. <laughs> how far? Three hours. Not that far. The pizza. And Florence is here. It's by Florence. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Bologna. Mm -hmm. um, catacombs. Cool. Yeah. The Trevi Fountain, right? It's a big one. Um, so let's choose one to read since we don't have much time. What, what do you guys want to hear about? Colosseum. The Colosseum. Yeah, Colosseum. Okay. Yes. Okay, the Roman Colosseum originally known as the Flavian Amphitheater, was commissioned in AD 72 by Emperor Vespasian. It was completed by his son Titus in 80, with later improvements by Domitian. Terrible. 
pronunciation. <laughs> the Colosseum is located just east of the Roman Forum and was built to a practical design with its 80 arched entrances, allowing easy access to 55,000 spectators who were seated according to rank. The Colosseum is huge, an ellipse 188 meters long and 156 wide. Originally, 240 masks, uh, masts were attached to stone corbels on the fourth level. Um, so it's pretty old, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Gladiators. <laughs> That's how we know about, um, I think, what I know about the Colosseum. It's where the gladiator fights were, right? Um, do you guys know about gladiators? Yeah, I watched the movie. Mm -hmm. You picture them, you know, in the ring, everybody kind of around, clapping, cheering, right? It was a form of entertainment. Um, the gladiatorial games continued until Christianity progressively put an end to those parts of them, which included the death of humans. So it became less and less acceptable as time went on to kill people yeah. for fun. Well, there, um, were, the, there were the lions mm -hmm. in the ring. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Lots of crazy stuff went on. Um, right, Massacre was on a huge scale. At inaugural, uh, inaugural games in 8080, over 9,000 wild animals, animals were killed. Lions? 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 Or tigers? Lions? 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 Yeah. Lions, t like jungle animals. Mm -hmm. Cats. Um, That's enormous. Cats, but you know what I mean, like the big cats, panthers, and yeah. Yes. Um, any vocabulary in here? No. No, it's okay. Yeah, it seems. A lot of it you can you can gain the meaning from the context. I think you know, like stone yes. corbels. Uh -huh. What is it? Um, how do I explain it? <laughs> Show a picture. <laughs> Yeah, I'll show you a picture. I don't know how to. It's like a supporting. Um, what would I do without Google, guys? What would I do? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah like a supporting corner type thing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The problem is those things are not in my language. Yeah, so and it's... this word, I mean, it's not exactly a common word. The only reason that I even know it is from, like, an art history class. So <laughs> it's not. <laughs> Not common. <laughs> what is Vespasian? Sorry, I just realized this is like way too. Sorry. Um, which? Uh, it's the name of a guy, a dude. <laughs> oh, here he is. Vespasian, I think. So. Vespasian, Vespasian. I I know I'm pronouncing it wrong. Um. Nice. The founder of the Flavian dynasty, which ruled the empire for a quarter century. Mm -hmm. Handsome fellow, indeed. Um, mm. uh, okay, let's chat uh, for the last bit about Rome. Um, Okay, so basically, first of all, which we, we only really had time to read about one, but out of the list there that we looked at, um, I'll go back to it. Where would you guys like to go? Uh, if you went to Rome, what would be the first place that you'd go? Colosseum. Milano. The Colosseum. Mm -hmm. The Pantheon as well? Mm -hmm. I'd like to go to Milano. Ah, uh, Milan. Um, and yes. Venice. 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 Mm -hmm. Venice. Mm -hmm. Venice also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, what about the catacombs? Mm -hmm. yes. I want to go to the catacombs. I've mm -hmm. seen pictures and it looks really cool and creepy. <laughs> catacombs. Mm -hmm. Do you know what that is, catacombs? Mm -hmm. No. Uh, let me show you. Below the uh, mm -hmm. Below ground, um, a burial site. Oh but yes. It's wow. like a pile. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Scary. Very <laughs> creepy. Very yeah. creepy. I went to the catacombs in Paris. I think I showed you guys a picture before, didn't I? Of the catacomb? No. No? no? Um I did, right? I don't know. I don't know where they are now. I'll find one later, but um very creepy. Really creepy. <laughs> like the lines, uh, walls lined with skeletons. Where are they located? In Paris? 
Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of in the center, but it goes underneath the entire city. It's enormous. Mm. Enormous. I didn't know that. Um, it was closed for a long time, actually. For They were reconstructing and kind of digging some more and, and restabilizing everything for about a year. Um, but I got to go in, which was cool. So it's very, very creepy vibes down there. We left after about... Ten minutes, we got really creeped out. We're like, oh, we gotta go. <laughs> Let us um, go. Yeah. Okay. So, I want you guys to get some practice with reported speech while we're talking. So, imagine you're on a plane to Rome, <laughs> and you overhear the conversation of people behind you gossiping or talking about whatever they're talking about. Um, what did they say? We're imagining, I want you to pretend this really happened to you, okay? So, for example, I might go, um, oh, the girl said, the one girl said that she was really excited about going to Rome, but the other girl told her that Rome was stupid and she'd rather go to Venice, and then the flight attendant came over and gave them a dirty look and told them to be quiet because they were disturbing everyone. <laughs> Okay, so just kind of imagine something. I just want you to use reported speech um, and pretend it really happened. So maybe, Che Che, do you want to try? No. <laughs> no? And does anyone want to try? Can I try? Try. Okay, Sam, Che Che, I'll come back to you. You can uh, let your imaginative juices flow while Sam tells us. <laughs> Report speech. Is it reported speech okay? Right, right. Mm -hmm. Samantha said that she can uh, that she want to go to the uh, what is the name the place I forgot the caracol uh, caracol Samantha Samantha said that she want to go to the caracol cool. because there is secret secret uh, scare thing, things uh, um, strange <laughs> like a secret scare scare oops I secret spoke. and scare Scary. Yes, yeah, scary yeah. and strange things. The yes. three S's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. Um, so maybe I'm on the plane talking about how I'm excited about the catacombs. Okay. Um, could you type the? Could you, uh, could you type that place? The name yeah, of sure. that place. Catacombs, like that, catacombs. Um, Liliana, what did the girls on the plane say? <laughs> uh, okay, um, let me think. Uh, he said that, um, she said that she really uh, liked them because uh, she, um, uh, she read, she read uh, about the history of uh, mm -hmm. the catacombs. Mm -hmm. And um, she said that uh, she she would like to to come uh, to come back, not to go back. Mm -hmm. uh, the 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 year the year the, the year before the I forgot how to say that the year before no the, the year before year. no the uh, year, so. last year last year okay last year you can say the year before yeah okay the year before. Okay. And uh, the other girl said that um, uh, she, uh, she she didn't like uh, like them because uh, she thought that uh, she was it was uh, a creepy place. Mm -hmm. uh, so they uh, they they discuss uh, about the topic. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, I'm glad you used come. Uh, we didn't have that in here. Turns into go. Uh, go back. Uh, go back. Right. Yeah. And you did it correctly. Um, but I, this is the same. It goes with these ones. This, that, here, there. Mm -hmm. Here to there. Still in the same location. It's another one of those. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, okay. So if you're reporting from home, talking about coming home, then you would still use come. But if you're somewhere else, then you would say go. Go. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Good, good, good. Okay, that was perfect. Um, Cheche, did you think of something? 
uh, not really, but okay, uh, maybe. it's okay, Joe. I'm just putting you on the spot now. <laughs> um, Alex, <laughs> would you like to try? Uh, yes, I'll try. Uh, that uh, girl in the plane uh, was uh, say that uh, she was see the movie about gladiators, <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, she would like to go to the Coliseum. Good, good. So she said that she good, perfect. She wants to go to the Coliseum. Awesome. And for again. Um, I, I was on a tour guide, and there were a couple, old couple behind me and they said that the tour guide was really cocky and they didn't like his attitude towards the old people because they had uh, they said that they were having hard times with walking for the long kilometers mm -hmm. so and uh, a young lady said that there has to be there had to be some age groups so they would be able to travel according to their ages. Is that that's true? No, I just just. Oh, that. I thought that actually happened. I was like, oh, that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna give paste the documents again. There's your reported speech. There's your home homework if you want practice. Um, do you guys have any questions for me? Sorry, we didn't get to have as much of a discussion today, um, but do you have any questions about reported speech or anything? It's okay about reported speech, but I have two questions about two words that can I ask you? Mm, sure. Mm -hmm. Arrived and reached. Reached. When can I put arrived and reached? Arrived and reached. It's pronounced reached. 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 Mm -hmm. Um. Uh. They're the same, really. Um, so you would say that you've reached, yeah. I know, I know what meaning, but it is the same. Yeah. It is. I have to. Uh, yeah. Yes. If you've arrived somewhere, you can say that you've reached your destination. You've mm -hmm. reached. But the difference is, I could say, okay, um, I'm flying to Rome, right? I'm flying, yes. flying. Um, yesterday I arrived. Okay. But okay. I can't say yesterday I reached. Yes. That doesn't work. I would have to say yesterday I reached my destination. I reached mm -hmm. the airport. I Can you have also to I say I I arrived my mm -hmm. my class. You could. So arrived doesn't necessarily demand an object. You can just say I arrived and that's yes. fine. Reached demands the object. You can't just say I reached. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, but they do have sort of the same meaning. Thank um, you very much. And yeah, Firkin, you're right. Arrive sounds a little bit more casual. Um, mm -hmm. You can also say, Sam, you could also say, I got there. Mm -hmm. I got. I got there. Got also is Another use of get. Get, we use it to show that you've arrived somewhere. Mm -hmm. I got. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to write. I um, got from the bus. Doesn't demand... Right, doesn't. Right. In this context, yeah. Um, okay. Demands. Sorry. Any other questions for me before Thank I go? Thank you very much. Go? You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, guys. Here's Facebook. Here's my Facebook, and that's it. So hopefully I'll see you guys tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Bye. Thank you for coming. Thanks. Bye, everyone. Bye, bye. See you soon.